Hi and welcome to the next tutorial. In today's lesson we'll be looking at how to create this isometric building using Adobe Illustrator. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create a new document. And so my document is going to be 1920 by 1080 and then I'm just going to click create. Now the easiest way to draw these isometric drawings is by using a grid. So we are going to create a new grid. Now if you don't see this button, this rectangular grid tool, you might have to go into your all tools and find it. But anyways, you click on the screen and you need to change some settings. You need to put the width to 1000 pixels, the height to 1000, the horizontal and vertical dividers to 100. Once you're done with that, press OK. Then what we need to do is we need to make sure that we align this to the center so we can go into our align tools make sure you horizontal align and vertical align and there we have it in the center the next thing that we need to do is we need to transform this because it's not yet isometric so what we need to do is we need to first untick this link chain icon and we need to only affect the height or the h values and we have to put in this number exactly the number is 86.602% press enter and then we need to go to shear and change this to negative 30 press enter and then finally on the last angle press 30 and then press enter and you have to do it in that order because otherwise it, you will not get an isometric grid like this so once we've got that we just need to change the color so we can go into our properties I'm just going to make the stroke to one um, and I'm just going to change the color to something a little bit brighter and maybe I'll change the opacity maybe something around about okay cool so now I'm in my layers and I'm just going to double click that and call that the grid and I'm going to lock that and then I'm going to add a new layer for the rest of my drawing so the first thing that we need to do is we need to get some colors so I've gone to color hunt and I've downloaded some nice colors here and I'm just going to add them to my swatches so once I've got my colors imported I then can grab the eyedropper tool and once I've done that I can then go into my swatches panel and I can just click this button over here and add it as a new swatch. So now I can see that my swatch is there. So now I'm going to do the next thing, the next color, just press OK, and then that pink, and finally this color here. Now I want to go back to that pink here because I want to just make one new swatch of this, which is going to be something maybe a little bit we'll go a little bit darker and I'm just going to add that to the swatch so really you want to have you don't want to use too many colors you want to have the, your highs your mids and your shadows so the darkest colors are going to be your shadows and then the lightest ones are going to be maybe your your highs etc so the first thing that we need to do is we need to now see if we can draw on this grid so you need to make sure that you go into your view settings and you need to make sure that you turn this on snap to point and you turn off snap to pixel so once we've done that we're going to first start by drawing a cube using the pen tool so i'm going to click over here and you want to look for that intersect all right and that intersect will mean that that line is going to be hitting those two other lines so what we're going to do here is we're, we're going to start by drawing a simple cube and you need to make sure that you join it all up so you can go over here and you can change the colors if you want once you've drawn one side of the cube you can draw the next side of the cube now you have to um, press shift here so that you can click on that anchor point and then you draw according to the grid and you need to make sure that you relink that section of uh, that square. So I'm going just, just to change that color slightly. And then finally, the last part of that cube. And I'm just going to change that color. So there's our cube. And you can see that that color difference really makes a big difference there. 
So looking at our isometric building, we've got all these small little windows and we've got like a roof and a door there and then we've got this um, outside kind of green area with two trees. So to do that, all right, we can do this a few ways. You can actually go and grab the direct selection tool on here and then you can click on the, the path and you can draw this up much bigger or you can just draw it out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw it out again. And I'm just going to grab the pen tool and I'm just going to draw. I'm going to probably go, what's that, six across. And there's no set measurements for these, this building. Okay. I've just drawn a rectangle. And then all we are going to be doing is bringing this rectangle down. And just make sure that you match it up. So once you have that, then you can go in and start to change the colors. And then finally, the last part of the building. So make sure you hold shift so that you can actually click on the anchor points and make sure that you close it off. And so that's our darker one. And so now if you want to go back and change any of these colors, for example, if I want to make that the darker one, I can go and do that very easily. Now again, if you want to change the height of this, you can always grab the direct selection tool and then you can just bring that up slightly. So I'm probably just going to bring it up to about there. Cool. So the next thing that we will have to do is we're going to have to put in these windows. All right. And there's a few ways that we can do this. We can do this manually or we can let Illustrator kind of do it for us, but we're still going to have to draw the first row of windows. So what it is that we are going to be doing is again, we're going to grab the pen tool and we are going to be drawing a window. So we're going to make sure that it's the right height and size first. So there's my window and I'm just going to make it a blue color. And so now what we are going to be doing is we are going to be putting this window on the actual building. So we're going to have to find out where we want the, the actual windows to go. So I'm just going to unlock this grid layer and actually put it right at the top just so that we can see easier. All right. And so what I'm going to do now is, so I'm just going to lock that and I'm just going to duplicate this window by holding alt on my keyboard. So I can duplicate it now and I need to make sure that it sits in alignment and I probably can just fit maybe one more in there. Okay. So now there's, you know, you've got some weird spacing in between all of these uh, windows. So what you can do is you can actually duplicate this again and put a window on either side of that row of windows, highlight all of the windows. And then if you go into your align tools, and if you don't have it, it's in window align. So you want to align to the selection. And then what you can do is you can distribute the spacing in between them. And that will give each one of these windows um, the same kind of spacing. So now we don't need, we don't need this anymore. So we can just delete the windows on the side and then we can play around with some of these settings and just to get them on the same kind of alignment. Cool. So the next thing that we can do is we can add a stroke to these windows. So firstly, I'm going to group that by pressing control G to group. And then I'm going to go into my properties and I'm just going to go over here and click on the stroke and the stroke. I want this uh, color over here and I'm going to have to click on the word stroke and I'm going to have to change it to the inside. And so now I can go and I can put these kind of window frames on my windows. So that looks pretty good at a stroke size of two. Okay. So now we're going to repeat that for 
few times. So we can do this easily by just holding Alt and dragging. Or you can do this by making a, a copy on the last row and on the top row. So we can do this by going to Object, Blend, and we'll go into our Blend Options. And what we want is, we want to just put a number of steps in here. Now, we can only fit really one more row in there. So I'm just going to put one in there. But if you've got more space, you can definitely increase this number. And so when you press OK, nothing really happens. But if you go into Blend and then Make, it will now duplicate that so that we can get that kind of effect. So that's looking pretty cool. So now we also need to make sure that we're doing the windows down on the other side. And again, there's many different ways to do this, but a very simple way is, is by using Reflect. So to use Reflect, all you have to do is you have to highlight your windows here. Then you have to press O on your keyboard and you need to hold Alt and you need to find this point here, this anchor point, which will it will wrap around for you. So this Reflect you know, box will pop up and you can see here what it actually does. So I'm going to be copying that and so now it's made a pattern of three on either side. So I'm just going to delete the rest of those windows because we don't really need them. And then what we need to do is we need to make sure that we go into our um, layers panel. So if I see here, this is all my um, these windows on this side. And so what I need to do is I just need to delete the windows that I don't need. So we, we need the first row, but we don't need the other rows. And so there we have it. And I'm just going to move that over. So now I've got my windows on this side, windows on that side. There is a small little door that goes there. So the door goes there. And then we need to start to work on our outside, our landscaping. So what we need to do is, so firstly, I'm just going to make this uh, a little bit longer. So I'm just going to grab all of those sections and I'm just going to draw, drag it down using my direct selection tool. So this white arrow. So now that gives me more space to actually draw a door. So to draw a door, again, very simple. Okay, all you have to do is use the pen tool. Make sure you draw up. Okay, the door's gonna be three grids wide and then make sure that you link it all back up together and so I'm just going to change the color here but I'm going to move it across one cool so I have my door so the door has a white outline of a stroke so what we can do is we can just use the pen tool again make sure our color is set to white and we can just draw So firstly, I'm just going to change that. And now I'm going to add a stroke to that. So I'm gonna use that color for the stroke. I'm just going to bring it up to probably about two. So now if you didn't link and join uh, the rectangle down the bottom, you will get that kind of effect. Cool. So now we're up to doing the trees and this kind of area. So all this is, is just a rectangle, a green rectangle, and then it's got some shading over here. So again, very simple to do. All we are going to be doing is grabbing the pen tool and drawing another uh, rectangle. So there's no real size for this. It's just make sure that it's a proper rectangle and then just join it up. So now we're just gonna change that color to a green. So I'm just going to use the greens that are available there and I'm just going to make sure that this is underneath all the other parts of the building. So now if you want to make it bigger or smaller, you can always do that using the direct selection tool. So then I'm just going to grab and do the shadows. And again, it's very simple. It's just using the pen tool. So now I'm just going to make sure that I go down one go all the way to the bottom here and then draw that back up and so that's going to have the lighter shade of green and then finally the last bit is to draw 
the shadows and so that color is going to be the darker green so cool it's looking very very good so the last thing that we need to do is we need to add these trees now it's very simple to create these trees and all I'm going to be doing is starting on a new section of my document I'm just going to grab the ellipse tool and I'm going to draw a circle and so I'm going to set that color and then also I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a rectangle a pretty thin rectangle I'm just going to change that color to brown so now obviously I need to put the top of the tree above that layer and so there's my tree the next thing that we need to do is we need to group these objects together we can press ctrl G to group them and then we're gonna cut them in half so I'm just going to draw a rectangle directly in the middle of these two objects and then I'm going to select both the rectangle and the tree and I need to go to my pathfinder settings and then I can go and click this thing which is called divide and once I've done that I then can delete the rectangle by double clicking and then I can delete the other half of this tree so we've now got one half of a tree so that's pretty cool so far and so what we can do now is we can actually revolve this so if I go and if I click on that and then if I go into my effects 3d revolve all right we need to change this from right edge and then we need to change the position to isometric right or left and there you have it there is a 3d tree that we can actually put into our designs and if you want to change the, the shading options like where the sun is coming from you can do that over here so you can leave it like that if you really want to or you can you know do your own kind of shading with it so once you're happy with your tree what you can do is you can now just place it on your on your grassy area and you can just duplicate however many trees you need so in this case because I have more green area I can now duplicate them three or four times so we're nearly there we just need to add a path for our person and we need to add the person so to do the path is quite simple all we need to do is we need to go into our pen tool and we just need to draw a another rectangle here so the final thing that you need to do is I've just downloaded this free person from freepick.com and I've also put them into my um, into my scene but anyways that's about it the other things that you could do is you could put a shadow um, from this tree or you could put a different color kind of effect on the tree um, but yeah there's so many possibilities with all these uh, isometric drawings also having a gradient on the window will also look pretty cool but yeah but that's pretty much the basics so far so anyways guys here's another example of how to put the path in and you can see you can do a million and one different things using this method anyways guys i hope you learned something in this lesson thanks for watching and i'll see you next time